Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of December. Protests against new citizenship law continue across India. Demand rollback. Pakistan's former President Musharraf challenges death sentence in treason case. And saffron production hits record high in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Protests and marches against the Citizenship Amendment Act and the proposed National Register of Citizens have continued since December 11 when the law was passed. On Friday, hundreds of people held protests in parts of India, including capital New Delhi, to protest against the contentious law and demanded its rollback. Hundreds of people gathered outside the iconic Jama Masjid in Indian capital, New Delhi, on Friday to protest against the Citizenship Amendment Act. The protesters, many of whom gathered after offering Friday prayers at the mosque, raised slogans against the new legislation and the proposed National Register of Citizens, or NRC. Meanwhile, police detained a group of protesters who tried to stage a demonstration outside the Uttar Pradesh Bhavan against alleged police atrocities in the province following the agitation over the religion-based citizenship law. In West Bengal province, a joint protest rally was held by opposition Congress and left parties against the new law. The act grants citizenship to non-Muslim communities from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh that fled to India because of religious persecution there. जब तक ये विद्रोह नहीं होगा रैली होते रहेगा ये प्रतिवाद होते रहेगा विरोध होते रहेगा ये हम लोग का राइट है जो इस देश में जो संविधान है ये है इम्पार्शियल सहिष्णुता इसमें है एंड कोई सांप्रदायिक नहीं है तो ऐसा एक कानून लाया गया जिसमें एक पर्टिकुलर रिलीजन का आदमी को मतलब निकल रहा है यहाँ से Meanwhile, large number of Muslims also took out a protest march against the amended Citizenship Act in front of Ajmer Dargah in Rajasthan province, demanding a rollback of the controversial law. People braved chilly winds on Friday as the cold wave intensified across northern India. Weather officials said due to the persistence of northwesterly winds, northern India will experience severe cold day conditions in the next two days. People across northern India braved chilly winds on Friday as a severe cold wave swept through the region. People woke up to a foggy morning in Amritsar city of northern Punjab province. They were seen wrapped up in multiple layers of clothing to shield themselves against the cold and some of them warmed their hands by lighting bonfires. A resident said children and the elderly were facing a hard time due to the cold weather. <laughs> जागना जूगना पागे कपड़े पागे निगे तांपा बचे हैं कब ठंड तो बहुत बुरा हाल है ठंड ने देख कोरा ना का पैर है हाथ पैर बिंगे हो रहे हैं इंडियन कैपिटल न्यू दिल्ली इस आल्सो एक्सपीरियंसिंग द लॉन्गेस्ट कोल वेव इन दिसंबर इन 22 इयर्स a weather official said minimum temperature was recorded as 4.2 degrees Celsius in Delhi and its neighbouring areas on Friday and the cold wave situation was likely to remain over the next two days. Today, we have recorded the number of 4.2 degrees Celsius in the Delhi and its neighbouring areas on Friday and its neighbouring areas on Friday. So, this condition is for cold wave in Delhi and NCR. आप 28 और 29 में भी हम लोग कोल्ड डे की कोल्ड वेब की समाना। Meanwhile, the situation was not very different in Patna in Bihar province, as the city was gripped under the influence of deeping mercury. 
Located in the tropics, most of India witnesses a very hot summer and a largely temperate winter. Snowfall in Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh has a direct impact in Delhi, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. The MiG-27, which proved to be an ace attacker during the 1999 Kurgil war with Pakistan, roared through the skies for one last time on Friday in northern Jodhpur Air Base after serving the Indian Air Force for over three decades. The Indian Air Force on Friday decommissioned Mikovan Gurovich 27 or MiG-27, the fighter aircraft that played a stellar role during the 1999 Kargil war with Pakistan 20 years ago. The last squadron of seven planes rode through the skies for the last time at the Jodhpur Airways in northern Rajasthan province, where the only squadron that operates the MiG-27 is based. Various functions were held during the de-induction ceremony attended by the members of the Air Force and their families. The MiG-27, codenamed Bahadur in India, has been the backbone of the Indian Air Force ground attack fleet for the past four decades. The fleet earned its glory in the historic Kargil conflict when it delivered rockets and bombs with accuracy on enemy positions. So when 29 squadron flying the MiG-27, the MiG-27 is being wound down in Jodhpur, for me, it is extremely nostalgic, extremely nostalgic. And not just that, 29 squadron of course has been at the forefront. It's never ever been worn down like what you heard some time back. 61 years history, it's never been number plated before. It has won laurels during all the wars. It's shot down aircraft. The MiG-27 currently in operation is an upgraded version inducted in 2006. It has been operating as part of the Indian Air Force strike fleet. The number 29 squadron is now slated to be number plated on March 31, 2020, with December 27 being its last flying day, thereby making the Swing Wing fleet a part of Indian Air Force glorious history. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's former president Parvez Musharraf on Friday moved the Lahore High Court, challenging the death sentence given to him by a special court in the high treason case against him. The special court had convicted Musharraf for violating the constitution by unlawfully declaring emergency rule in 2007. Pakistan's former president Parvez Musharraf filed a petition with the Lahore High Court on Friday, challenging the death sentence handed to him by a special court in the high treason case against him. On December 17, a special court in Islamabad handed death sentence to Musharraf in absentia, finding him guilty of high treason for imposing a state of emergency in 2007. The petition filed by Musharraf's lawyer on his behalf on Friday names the federal government and others as respondents. It also challenges the verdict's graphic paragraph 66, which said Musharraf's body should be hanged for three days if he dies before his execution. According to local media reports, the Lahore High Court will hear the petition on January 9, 2020. A day after the special court's verdict, 76-year-old Musharraf, in a video message from his hospital bed in Dubai, said, The judgment is the result of a personal vendetta. He said it is an unprecedented case in which neither the defendant nor his lawyer were allowed to defend. Afghan forces backed by foreign troops in Afghanistan and the Taliban militants have stepped up clashes to gain more ground and consolidate positions in the country during winters. In the latest showdown, nearly 30 militants were killed across the country on Thursday. Nearly 30 militants were killed across Afghanistan on Thursday as the wearing sides have stepped up activities in the conflict-battered country. In the latest showdown, the government forces stormed a Taliban hideout in northern Kunduz province on Thursday, killing five insurgents and wounding three others. Similarly, the warplanes of government forces struck a gathering of the armed militants in Jorzan province, killing six militants and wounding five others. According to officials, Taliban also launched multi-pronged offensive on security checkpoints on Thursday morning in Chal Gaza area, triggering fierce fighting which lasted for a few hours, in which 11 fighters were killed. Meanwhile, a roadside bomb attributed to the Taliban exploded in the eastern coast city in the morning rush hour, wounding five civilians. 
Both the government and the Taliban are fighting in Afghanistan to gain more ground and consolidate positions to secure upper hand in the possible intra-Afghan talks expected in coming months. More on news from Afghanistan. Saffron cultivated and produced in Afghanistan has been recognized as the best in the world in quality for several years. Afghan government in its latest statement this week said that saffron production in the country has soared to record levels in 2019 with a 22% increase compared to last year. Saffron production in Afghanistan has soared to record levels in 2019 with a 22% increase compared to last year, Afghan Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation and Livestock said on Wednesday. The ministry in a statement said that latest statistics showed that saffron or so-called red gold production increased 22% reaching 19,469 kg this year, which is about 20 metric tons. The statement said saffron farmers would receive some 27 million US dollars in revenues from this year's harvest. In local Afghan markets, 1 kg of saffron is priced about 634 US dollars to about 1147 US dollars depending on the quality. The saffron cultivated and produced in Afghanistan has been recognized as the best in the world in quality for several years. It has given Afghanistan a good name in world markets that for decades have earned worldwide notoriety for its production of drugs. In news from Bangladesh, the five-day winter show of Bangladesh's realtors to showcase flats, plots and other real estate and housing products kicked off in capital Dhaka earlier this week. The fair is aimed at boosting the country's real estates. The winter show of Bangladesh's hundreds of realtors to showcase flats, plots and other real estate and housing products kicked off in capital Dhaka earlier this week. Organized by the country's biggest real estate association, Real Estate and Housing Association of Bangladesh or Rehab, the five-day fair was inaugurated by Bangladeshi Housing and Public Works Minister S.M. Rizal Karim. The exhibition was attended by a large number of realtors their clients, property dealers and financial institutions. The largest annual fair which has a total of 230 stalls this year, the highest since 2013, is aimed at boosting the country's real estate. The fair will conclude on December 28. Tibetan Buddhists in India's Shimla city recently organized prayers for world peace to dispel the evils of the previous year and bring good luck for the coming year. Tibetans in exile organize the annual prayers every year in the final month according to the Tibetan lunar calendar. Tibetan Buddhists in exile recently organized prayers for world peace and to usher good luck for the coming year and dispel evils of their previous year in India's northern Shimla city. Hundreds of Buddhist monks gathered at the Dorji Drug Monastery and performed rituals and offered prayers with full devotion to drive away all the obstacles and welcome the Tibetan New Year. The festival is called Gutor, in which the monks perform a traditional Tibetan dance form called Cham dance and light fire and throw objects in the fire, which signifies riddance from bad omen. It dispels the evil spirit in every uh, bad, uh, you can say, negative uh, emotions and negative uh, uh, positive it will bring positive emotions and uh, uh, dispel the negative evils so naya sal aatne mein koi aisa bure aisa na ho sabko sukh shanti world peace sabko aao is wajah se ye puja kiya jata hai as per the tibetan lunar calendar december is the 10th month of the year traditionally in tibet this festival is celebrated in the 12th month, which is February, before Loser or New Year celebration. Up to 100,000 Tibetan Buddhists live in exile in India 60 years after their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, took refuge in the country after a failed uprising against Chinese rule. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.